Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly. So let's see what's in store for us this week. Obsidian Wonderloots, he did a new video on the Obsidian Bases plugin, which is a new core plugin that the team has been developing. And he's really focused on versions 1.9.3 and 1.9.4, which had a number of minor updates as well as two major updates within the Obsidian Bases plugin. And one of these was the new card view, so definitely worthwhile checking that out. And he also looks at the template generator and gives us a number of practical use cases of how we can use the Obsidian Bases plugin to make our lives easier. So definitely worthwhile checking out, even if you don't have a Catalyst license, so at least you can get a sense of things to come. And if you do, definitely worthwhile also checking out because he does go through some practical use cases. And if you are an Ocean user and you are interested in having databases in the Obsidian uh, app, then worthwhile having a look through because it's getting closer and closer. Next up is Obsidian versus Tana. So Sebastian, he wrote a blog post of why he'll never switch over from Obsidian to Tana. And in it, um, he basically writes that both of them are great apps, but they're not for everyone. And here's the reasons why he will never swap over. And obviously you've got the usual suspects, um, local versus, versus not, offline versus no offline mode, um, and various different other things. But there are a couple more which I hadn't really thought of, for example, price hikes, extensibility, customizability, account loss and data loss, and a few other things that are worthwhile considering if you are on the fence with these two apps. On the flip side is obviously that then we have another blog post titled Five Reasons Why I Left Obsidian Fortana. So quite the opposite. And Jim, in this article, he writes his thoughts of why he believes um, it's best to use Tana as opposed to Obsidian. So definitely worthwhile checking that one out as well. And if you've got any thoughts on it, please do write a comment because I'd be greatly interested to see what you think. Next up is a document of working in flashcards, uh, working with flashcards in Obsidian. So OP writes that flashcards are important and in Obsidian he's found a way or a workflow to basically have the best of both worlds, that he can have his notes as well as the flashcards. And to do that, he basically uses Obsidian and RemNote side by side to get the flashcards in and have the answers um, shown in Obsidian so that you can then improve and develop your learning. So in the article, it just goes through it, the flashcards, the whole workflow, place your cursor at the heading in Obsidian, control or shortcut A, do various different things, and then just repeat for all the flashcards, and then you can review them. So basically what you have is you have the flashcards here, and then it will take you to the answer within Obsidian. So I think it'd be great if Obsidian do um, improve their flashcard or SRS, there is a few plugins, but it'd be great if they also improved. Um, so we shall see what happens with that one. But it's a useful article if you want to see flashcards within Obsidian. And next up is Obsidian Notebook Navigator plugin. So if you want to have your notes in a similar fashion like you can in Apple Notes, then it's definitely worthwhile checking this great video out by Anton. It is using a plugin called Notebook Navigator. It's not yet available in the Obsidian store, so you have to install it using the Brat um, methodology, but within it, once you see it, let me just pull this up, you can then Are you looking at have your notes, in, so you, Anton goes through how to install it, what to do with it, some of the settings that he's tweaked, some of the configurations, and then as you can see here, you can have your notes in a very similar layout as you do in Apple Notes and in other apps that you have. So definitely worthwhile checking this out if you want to have a slightly different view of your notes and more navigational features. Capacities, they're up next. So they've reached 10K members in Discord. So well done to the Capacities team for that. And it just goes to show the dedication, the hard work, the quality app that they've developed and their interest in developing the community. So there's lots of them always active and chatting within the community, so great to see. So here's to the next 10K members. And then they've also recently asked for queries and database improvements. So they were asking users how they could improve their queries and databases within the app and the feedback collection phase that's now ended. And you can see here what the team wrote. Thank you as always for your feedback, full transparency. We've been working hard on databases and queries. Uh, we've read and saved all your responses. We can discuss them internally and many were already on the roadmap and the others we will probably define the roadmap with some of these requests. 
So Kanban views is a highly requested feature. So we will see what we can do. So definitely worthwhile keeping an eye on that one um, and seeing what they can implement in terms of improvements to the queries and database. Tana, they're up next. So they had the office hours with Matt, Olav and a few other guest appearances, which was another quality um, video of them. So they showed a lot of insights and a lot of things that they have been working on and that they will look to be working on in the near future. And there was a few sneak peeks within the video. So they showed some building tools not really sure what all these mean, but triggers an async command processing, command execution document, agentic, tool calling, etc., etc. And when Matt um, unfortunately shared the screen, this was shown, and you can see Olav having a little bit of a disappointed look on his face. So it does sound like we had a little bit of a sneak peek behind the curtain of what Tana is working on. They also showcased Tana Lens, Tana Publishing 2.0, and some different Tana views. Uh, so definitely worthwhile checking the video out and seeing what they've been up to and how TANA may improve and may differentiate itself, if differentiate itself from the others in the near future. And TANA Lens is the one that I'm really looking forward to because it's kind of like a unlinked references on steroids. So definitely worthwhile having a look at that and looking forward to seeing what Stian and the team can publish with that one. And as well as Publish 2.0 that had some quality updates as well. Flip side, still too complex. So a user in the Slack channel, they posted, this is the single most complicated messes that I have had the pleasure to try and learn. Nothing behaves the way you want it. I tried to create two super tags and reference fields, and it's a nightmare, not intuitive at all. This app will not succeed until it is more intuitive. So yes, on the one side, that is true. You could say the same about Obsidian, capacities, log seek, et cetera, et cetera. If you try and do something which is slightly not the norm, it can get quite complicated. One of the comments that were raised in response to this point was that you are trying to do auto population which is already notoriously complex within TANA so hopefully it's one of the areas that the team can look at and try and make simpler but with more and more comments that it's getting much more complicated to do certain things which users believe should be easier it might be a time for the TANA devs to try and make things a little bit more simpler so that people can make the most out of their notes in the way that they want to. And then the TANA team, they did a video on tasks and to-do management within TANA, and it goes through from the steps from beginning to the advanced stages, and it's Brage who presents it. I'm gonna take you through the- usual, and it just goes through the various different levels, super tags, custom fields and views, customizing your tasks, task dashboards, etc., etc. So definitely worthwhile checking out if you want to get from the basic features of TANA to the advanced setup to manage your to-dos and tasks. Logseek, um, Danzu, thank you very much again for posting the change log for the past week or so. And what we've got is a few new features. So page block and block page and block management. So there's a block page block conversion functionality, uh, move blocks, support for importing pages and block embeds, and enhanced import functionality, some new tag systems or improved tag systems. So now we can extend them through cycle validation. We can do PT on the keyboard to set tags and some mobile platform improvements and UI uh, optimizations. So that's great. So thank you very much, Danzu, for that one. And we'll see what the team can implement in the next week. There was also an update from the team itself. So um, CLD Walker, they wrote that this past month, they've been busy on the DB version, fixing bugs, bugs uh, UX enhancements and improvements and working on some new features. So you can see the full change or the full details that they've been working on in this post here with the various different changes in the file. And the new improvements are tags, libraries, plugin API, and DB Graph Importer. So great stuff from the team there. And on top of that, Charlie, who is part of the dev team, he's been working on something to make the navigation a lot smoother and better so that we can use the keyboard as well. So this is the old one. Yep, this is the before. So you can see it's pressing down from the date, it doesn't go down, doesn't go anywhere. Clicks here, writes a few things, clicks away, and then can navigate them with the keyboard. But again, he gets stuck as soon as he hits the title. And on the new version, what should happen is that you can basically navigate to just about anywhere using your keyboard. So you can scroll through the different journal pages. You can then edit them, um, or add text, and then go down, up, navigate to a new page, 
and then navigate with a keyboard. So a lot more keyboard functionality coming to LogSeq, which is great to see. So thank you for that, Charlie and the team. Upflow, after a few weeks of quietness, they've now had a big update, which include, includes a number of things. So we can do private page sharing now, uh, guest editor collaboration with a pro plan, and you can edit non-invite, you can en invite non-members to it to collaborate in real time. So basically guest editors, which is a great addition. And they've now completed the new syncing protocol, which should make things a lot faster, more reliable, and allow um, a lot more security and performant syncing. And what they've got upcoming in the next few releases, you can mention a person, so add someone in the documents. The web version will allow login with passport, AI prompts, libraries, and you will be able to do a vault so that it's a new type of workspaces, uh, which is private and offline, and self-hosting as well, improvements coming to that one. So great to see from the AppFloy team some good updates um, that they've been working on. I find if you wanted a detailed walkthrough of the app and how you can self-host it, then this video is the one for you. Uh, basically, he goes through the whole um, video of getting it set up. He uses something called Elestio uh, to set it up so that you can self-host it. Not expensive at all. Uh, basically, goes through the whole thing and then how you can implement Affine to work offline with um, or self-host it. So definitely worthwhile having a look in that one. Heptabase, they've done 1.6.0 uh, or 1.60. Uh, support global searches, error messages, fixed issue with Gemini Pro 2.5 and fixed an issue with deep linking. And also they have provided a couple of new articles based on their latest AI um, implementation of how you can use it, how it works and what you can do with it. So definitely worthwhile checking out if you're interested in learning more about the new Heptabase um, AI feature and how you can possibly use it to level up your knots. Next up is Griply. So I've not come across this one before, but my fellow enthusiast of PKM, Daniel, he posted about it quite a bit of times. So I thought I would check it out. And it is a way of connecting your goals, habits, daily tasks in one powerful, easy to use app. And I have been testing it out for a little bit um, in the past week. So you can have various different goals, which I've just made up. They then have, for example, uh, you can just do one, create a new goal. Uh, one million in a life area of, uh, let's say, education and learning. And I want to complete it, let's say, by December. 31st and we'll save that one so then that comes in that's a new goal that you have here so you can see them from a glance of what your main goals are for the year for the next five years etc etc so you can then have a broad view and then you can zoom in a little bit as well with the various different habits so if you want to do 50 ab presses or ab crunches work 10,000 steps read um, x amount of times per week per month you can set up various different things. So for example, you can have reading, change the icon, schedule schedule it on specific days. So you can have it how many days for the week or set a specific time. So you want to do it three times per month, per year, whatever it might be. Any reminders, priority, it links to which one of your goals or life areas. And if you want to have any tags, you can add them there. So you can see all of that. You can see some various different insights that you have. So the main goals at the top and the habits at the bottom. So you can see there's a 12 month view, four month view or four week view, this year, this quarter, this month, this week. So it just gives you a glance of where you are at at a particular moment in time. And then you can also see your inbox if you've got any tasks and tasks that you might have due today. Um, will show up here. So I'm still playing around with it. So I've just signed up to the free plan because it does offer quite a decent free plan. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the free plan, two goals, two habits, unlimited tasks, nine life areas, uh, goals, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's free, 249 per month or 499 per month if you're paying monthly. Unlimited goals, unlimited habits, etc., etc or the 8999 lifetime plan 
um, which includes everything and you just get it free for a lifetime. So if you're planning on using Ripley for more than three years, then it's obviously worthwhile going to the lifetime plan and at least then you are locked in for life. It does include a lot more other things which I'm going to play around with in the coming weeks. So I look forward to making more videos on this one. And it is available on the Mac and Windows, on the iPhone, on the browser, not yet for Android, although they do have a wait list, so hopefully there's something that is going to be pushed out soon enough. So that was that one. So definitely worthwhile checking out if you want a way to just check out your habits, goals and daily tasks. And last up, Thymer. So a couple of updates this week. So the release date, we finally have something communicated by the devs, and that appears to be likely in August 2025. So they did say it took us a lot longer than we had hoped for, but we are looking good for August. And in the meantime, they're going to keep updating and posting some various different demos and showcases. So there's lots to look forward to. I hope it's going to be at the start of August rather than at the end of August. But let's see what the devs do. And I don't know if it's going to be released to everyone on a beta phase, on a waitlist phase, uh, on an invite basis. No idea, but I hope they make it available to a number of people so that we can test it out. Next up was customize your notes UI with plugins. Um, so what they do here, you've got the note on the left, the plugin JS with a vibe coding element to it. So he wants to add a location or an icon at the bottom right. So because, and you can see that then plugins will auto been reloaded and the icon appears in the bottom left just through some writing a prompt. So great stuff on that one. Looking forward to testing that one out. And on top of that, the devs also give us an indication of pricing. So our thinking is to have a very generous free plan. So it's going to be free forever for hobby or non-commercial users within reason. And otherwise, it's going to be $7 per user per month. So they're really targeting, let's say, the corporate ones for their revenue streams. Um, although they are going to try and look into maybe ways that non-commercial um, just hobby or super fans can, can donate and just keep the team sustainable. And on top of that, they do say sync is always included. Sync is free for teams and individuals for non-commercial use. Um, right now, we have no paid, no plans to have paid on add-ons or other tiers, but that might change. So it seems to be the way that, let's say, Obsidian's going down, apart from their sync one, but offer it free, charge the commercial use age for it, and, and go from there. But hopefully they find a way to keep themselves sustainable, and before that, hopefully they find a way to release the app. So that was it for this week. So thank you very much for being here and I shall see you next week.